Okay, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can. My daughter is sleeping in the room above me, so I don't want to wake her up. But uh, this is the first like check-in clip for this vlog. I finished uh, Frontier, Frontier by Grace Curtis last night at the gym while I was walking. Um, fantastic. Five stars. I thought it would be. Uh, this is the story of a unnamed uh, main character who is seeking her lost love. She was in a spaceship and it was shot down over the earth which is uh, many many years in the future. There's been a huge apocalyptic event and those they're moving. Um, the people left on earth have developed this religion where it reveres the earth itself and cast those who left the earth during this apocalyptic event um, as sinners, as evil, you know, as, as possibly even causing it. And she has returned for reasons, and she is seeking her lost love. And the story is told not from her perspective, but from the people she meets along the way. And they each name her something different, and you're given a glimpse of the world and what it's like, and what these people are like, and what their lives are like, and along the way you gradually learn to love this world even though it's horrible, and you watch her fall in love with it even though she's being treated like garbage um, by some people. She's also being helped and loved and looked after by others. You just basically see the goodness of the world counterbalanced by the evil of it, and then at like 70% it does this wild twist that I didn't see coming. Um, absolutely fantastic i highly recommend if you enjoy like vignette style science fiction um that sort of like unnamed main character you see the world through other eyes as you follow them on a journey sort of thing uh there is a beautiful special edition from broken binding i'll see if i could insert a uh image of it here coming in february and i'm probably going to try and buy that that'll be my first broken binding book after drooling over many 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 volumes <laughs> um but fantastic i think this comes out late february somewhere in february or march um and i'll have like a full review and everything up but first book finished i'm gonna go upstairs and work on reading a swim team um which is a graphic novel that was recommended from bookish realm i'm gonna work on uh uh, reading that while my daughter finishes up her nap but um that is it from me i'll talk to you guys again soon bye Give me a race. every time you get upstairs with the husband um but i have in fact finished two things and dnf'd one since i last spoke to you which was yesterday the day before yesterday um yesterday was my daughter's birthday so i didn't get a uh so it must have been the day before that i updated you last i didn't get a ton of reading done yesterday but that night i got a bit of reading done i finished uh beetle and the hollow bones by Eliza Lane. Lane? Yes. This was absolutely delightful. Um, I loved the artwork in this. Uh, the story was very cute. Um, there's a skeleton with a tiny witch's hat. That kind of gives you the idea of the aesthetic of this. <laughs> it, was, it was overall very cute coming of age story about a young goblin who wants to be a sorceress, but she's training to be a witch under her grandmother's care. And her, um, she is friends with this blob ghost right here. And she finds out that she must help save blob ghost because the place that which blob ghost is bound to is being demolished. And she is joined 
in that endeavor by a childhood friend who returns home who is being trained as a sorceress. So it's about their relationship, uh, about them coming together, falling apart, coming together, that sort of thing to help Glob, Blob Ghost and all of the shenanigans that ensue. I will try to include some clips, if I haven't already, of the artwork, which I loved. Um, but a great little middle grade story. I recommend it if you like middle grade graphic novels, which I have been on a kick right now with those. Uh, I did DNF Weird Fishes, this one by Ray Marez. This, while beautiful, um, I just, it didn't, it, it wasn't working. I was like halfway through it and it felt like, I like weird, but this felt like weird for the sake of weird, and it was unclear, and it randomly threw in time travel, and I was just, I was out. Timey wimey stuff never works well for me, um, but even still, there was no actual time travel, it was just a mention of time magic, and it just, there was so much weirdness already that I was like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I also finished The Roamers by Francesco Verno? Dude, I think it's Verno. I keep saying Verso, but I think it's a Verno. Hated this. <laughs> One star. Um, I have a semi-rant review up on the blog because this is not available on Goodreads or Storygraph yet. It doesn't come out till May, uh, but despised it. Uh, absolutely despised it. Had a very interesting premise in that this is about a society that has developed with the aid of nanites, um, quote, liberation from food. Uh, what it really is, is a bunch of ramblings about anti-establishment, the obsession with sensation. There's a cat underneath this sofa, so if you hear that, I'm sorry. Um, anti-establishment ramblings. It was, um, the characters were reprehensible on the whole. Female characters had no aspects besides, you know, muscular thighs and bohawks, white skin, and a, such an overwhelming need to have a baby that they run around and cheat on their partners. Um, very bad. Don't recommend. Don't look it up. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a good pretty cover. Flat. Don't recommend. That's really all I want to say about it. Um, and I am getting ready to start Babel by R. F. Kwong. It's about time. I have no excuse. I have both an arc and a visit finished copy of this book on this Kindle. <laughs> I have no excuse. Okay. I will leave you in my shame. <laughs>
but I really, really, really loved this. Um, so I recommend it, but I won't say more on it because uh, it's they're currently on strike, and I'm not. I don't. I don't want to cross the strike line when I remember because I'm terrible for this. Um, that reminds me, <laughs> there is one other thing. Uh, Frizzy. I read Frizzy um, by Claudia Ortega. I think is her name. That's another middle grade graphic novel. And that one is first, second, I believe. Um, that is a fantastic um, graphic novel exploring the idea of good hair versus bad hair in, in cultural groups. Um, and how that has come down historically from the older generations to the newer, newer generations. And how, like, the black population, and I believe her family might have been Afro-Latin, they had that, like, idea of bad hair versus good hair and she had bad hair and her mother wanted to straighten it to have give it the appearance of good hair and how she had to learn to love her hair and how she had to talk to her mom and really break down like where her mom got that idea and finding that connection again and learning to love their hair the way it was and I just I thought it was beautiful I thought it was well done I thought for a middle grade graphic novel it explored the idea really well um, for the intended audience, I think it's fantastic. Um, great, great graphic novel. Could not recommend that one enough if you're interested in it. And plus, it's beautiful. I love the illustration style in that. I'll see if I can insert a few clips or screenshots of the art here. Uh, great graphic novel. But those are the only things I've managed to read. <laughs> this is the last clip. Uh, the last clip you saw before this was probably just us... Uh, going into the bookstore. We didn't buy anything. We we're just walking around. Um, I think that was Sunday and that night slash Monday morning is when I got sick. <laughs> Which sucked because my daughter had a doctor's appointment. So I was going, I was getting sick as we were <laughs> sicker throughout the day as the doctor's appointment crept up. But hopefully I'll be up and running again soon. Fingers crossed. I am back at least to be able to being able to like do basic things. <laughs> So there's that. Um, what I am currently reading, because besides graphic novels, I haven't been able to focus on anything, but I did manage to read a few more pages of the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels last night by India Holton. Um, I had a huge stack of library books that were causing me a lot of anxiety. So I went through and tried a chapter on a bunch of them. And I used library books to try out genres and stuff that I don't normally read. And I'm glad I did that. <laughs> there were several in there two specific ones that I DNF'd within the first like 15 pages because as is normal with uh mystery thriller genre they like to use like child death or loss of a child as a big like opening hook and I cannot and will not read that <laughs> so those got uh axed and a couple of them I just lost interest in so I'm falling back. I'm trying to purge out of the library stuff as much as I can because I tend to get in these little sprees and then lose interest like we all do. So I'm going back over to this. This I bought last year um, on my anniversary date with my husband. So I want to read this. It is hilarious and absurd and I am super enjoying it. I just <laughs> the mental space it's not there when I'm laying on the bed <laughs> or laying on the couch just hacking my lungs up and sneezing a mess. But that is it. Hopefully the next clip I will be less nasally and gross <laughs> for the next wrap up. Um, let me know what you guys have read this week, what you think, and let's see, if you've watched this whole vlog, give me a, give me a, just a happy emoji. Don't give me a sick emoji. <laughs> give me a happy emoji down below. <laughs> Good vibes. <laughs> we want to get better. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.